So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra final review. Now I might be trading this in for the S23 Ultra that is launching later today, so do stay tuned for my S23 content coming here to the channel soon, but I gotta just talk about this for a final time. I'll probably cover it again if I do decide to keep it, but you know, if I don't, this will be the final review here of this phone. I wanna kind of give you my last thoughts on it before they go on to a next phone. Now, this phone started out, you know, as, you know, very exciting for me. I was excited about the colorway. I was excited about the device, but then when I got it, it didn't perform super well. Samsung has launched some updates over its life cycle that have made it better. But still, I feel like out of a lot of the flagships like the Pixel, the iPhone, the Samsung devices still don't perform quite at that smooth level. They are super smooth with the 120 hertz panels, but I think it's just the software still just feels a little choppier. So I really wanna see performance enhancements to the S23 Ultra making that phone feel on that next level because I just still find a little bit of chop on these phones and that's something that really annoys me. Now, the body and the build of this phone, I really enjoyed. Overall, I mean, it's premium on the back. It feels a lot like a Note device. You know, it's clean camera housings. The edges and the sides are beautiful. They're really premium. However, I'm not a big fan of these curved edges. They're just too curved on the side. So hopefully Samsung goes to something a little bit closer to a flat screen on the next models. We're gonna see what they do in a couple hours here. But overall, you know, I'm just, I wasn't a fan of this, you know, super, I'm just getting tired of that. I want a more flat panel Samsung phone, especially on the Ultra line. But I do think the overall build and design is still top notch. You have USB-C, S Pen in the body, premium edges, not super thick, but still premium camera design. The back of the phone still feels nice. You know, not everybody's into the rectangular square look, but this phone still felt very premium. So overall, over my time using it, I definitely enjoyed the, you know, just the build and design of this phone. Now, the next one is the display. Now, how good is the display on here? And this is an area where Samsung always shines, and it was no different here for the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This display, super smooth with its 120 hertz refresh. However, the software does delay it a little bit. You can see we do have vivid and natural. You can tweak it in the vivid modes between different things. And you also have adaptive refresh rates where you can put it on standard or not. And overall, it gets very bright. And one of the major things about S22, they increase this brightness where you could put on extra brightness and really take advantage of the full brightness of the display. You know, because they'll advertise a really bright display, but then you couldn't take advantage of it before. But with the S22 Ultra, I was able to do that. So definitely enjoyed that element of the phone. Just a really nice, sharp, vivid panel right here. So if you're into that, you'll like that. Also, of course, with Samsung phones, you have the ability to tweak them down to full HD or go into their max resolution. Of course, the sharpest visuals do show or use the most battery life, and that is absolutely true. I noticed my battery life. We'll talk more about that later, but just a lot you can do with the display here. And having the S Pen does allow you to really take advantage of the larger panel, although I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the S Pen experience on the Fold now because it's just more canvas. But this is still a very nice experience because this, you don't need an extra bulky case to put the S Pen in, and it just feels nice to write on. So Samsung nailed it <laughs> with this, with S Pen. And this just feels classic Note device. One thing I also like more about this is the screen you know, it feels a little nicer to write on because the fold has that plastic inner display. So it feels a little bit like, it just doesn't feel as natural. Here it feels really nice. So definitely, I think you will like the S Pen experience if you do take advantage of it. Although I found that sometimes it's just more, you know, hassle to write that stuff down and just type it. But at the same time, having the ability to do artwork, AR doodle, I mean, the S Pen, the pen up community is awesome. It's a really relaxing way to, you know, wind down and do some drawings, do some coloring. So really like that. And there's a whole community, a thriving community of people who do different artworks in here and stuff. And I love to look at those, see what they're popping off every day. And you'll see that lots of different things. This kind of eliminates the need for a coloring book. So 
really did enjoy that with the S Pen as well. Now, I also want to talk about the software. Samsung software has been pretty similar for a while. They are making experiential updates all the time to One UI 5.1, 5.0, you know, all these softwares that they're coming out with, just, just the next iterations of the One UI software. But One UI really just brings everything in the kitchen sink, every type of feature that you really need and want, but also not quite as cluttered and nasty as the TouchWiz days when it was just kind of like just all over the place. Now it's a lot cleaner. We have a lot of nice features in here. You even can change the processing speed to optimize maximum, however you want. Still that classic customization that you love from Samsung devices. You can still theme out the phone down here. Pretty cool, easy without having to going into the Play Store. It makes it a fun experience overall. And then of course you have one of the best things about all Samsungs mostly is Dex right here. Now when you actually use this, it eliminates the need to go buy a computer. You just need a keyboard and you just need a monitor. I mean, that's pretty dope. You know, it could save you tons of cash if like that's something you want to do. You want to just make your phone your primary computing device. Dex has been awesome. And I think it's a real reason to consider trying out a Samsung phone, especially if you don't have the means or you just don't want to, you know, deal with separate computers. It could really minimalize your life down to just the smartphone that's in your pocket. That's pretty cool touch overall, I would say. Definitely a way for more people to get onto the computing experience. Now, in terms of the performance, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 on here definitely needs an update. And I think we're going to see an update to that soon. We always see a CPU upgrade. But this, this phone right here, this is not the 8 Plus Gen 1. This one just got too warm under heavy use. I can already feel it right now. And I haven't done nothing serious in this video. But this phone just it got way too heavy, uh, hot you know, day to day. So definitely, I would say in terms of heat, I want better management with the heat and I want better performance out the gate because last year I was annoyed that right out the gate, the phone was not performing amazing. You know, it still was fast ever since day one, but the software got smoother. The updates they made have enhanced the overall performance experience. So I would like to see the initial, you know, S23 Ultra come with really good performance right from the start. That's what I really want to, want to see on the next one. So that's pretty cool. Now, my final thoughts on the S Pen are, you know, we talked about some of the features earlier, but my final thoughts are, it's kind of like they already mastered the S Pen and it's just getting smoother every time, but not smooth enough that you really notice a major difference. I notice more the difference of the colors, you know, of the S Pen mostly. The S Pen has been mastered a while ago. They're just making it a little bit smoother every time you use it. So it's not really something they're really going hard on anymore. I think we're going to see more upgrades to the cameras this year and some other more important things like maybe optimization for battery life. We'll have to see. But definitely the S Pen, my thoughts on it, it's just what you expect. A really smooth pen experience, the best on a, a smartphone. Samsung mastered this a long time ago. This one was just a little bit more smooth and the next one should be a little bit more smooth. You get the point, incremental. Now, the next thing is my final thoughts on the camera. This has always been an excellent camera. I've been very happy with the Galaxy S22 Ultra's camera. And I think on the next model, they're probably just gonna take it a step forward. I always like this one more than the you know, Galaxy Fold series, this thing could go a hundred times zoom. And that's ridiculous. Now, this is not gonna be the sharpest camera for blowing up pictures and putting them on a wall, we all know that. But definitely 108 megapixels is still sharper than most phones out there. In addition, if you go into the ultra wide camera here, let's go four to three, if you go in the ultra wide, you could actually do a macro shot as well. So that's pretty cool. In addition to that, if we go to video, you'll see we had up to 8K 24 frames a second. Now, 24 frames a second is a little bit more cinematic than most people like. So I think they can upgrade the 8K to maybe, you know, a 60 FPS or a 30 FPS, something more that people would use. That would be nice. But the UHD 30 was cool. You know, full HD 60 is also cool. And I would just say that overall, they pretty much nailed it with the S22 Ultra's camera system. They had a lot of features in here, pro, pro video, night modes and stuff like that. And overall, I just kind of like want to see a little bit better selfie performance. 
you know, it's really sharp, but a little bit soft sometimes. And also the front facing videos are really good as well, but they're slightly too close to the face. So, you know, we could make them come out back out a little bit. But I think for, you know, an all around experience, you have the super steady modes. You have so much easy to use features, but are also very useful on this phone. Problem though, is they took out the SD card from this phone. So, you know, base storage needs to be improved. The SD card slots on here are definitely not, not on board. So it makes it a little bit more tedious than what I used to love about Samsung phones, which was the SD card slot. But I don't know if that's ever coming back. I don't, I don't see it happening for a while, but definitely missed that. Now, battery life on this phone has also, you know, finally, after using this for a while, I just got to mention the battery life has been not the best. Considering the size of this phone, this phone was not really overly impressing me. If I was medium on it, I'd make it a day. But any type of heavy use, I was actually draining this phone before the end of the day.